you're watching Last Minute Laura. Hey, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, so I'm getting super motivated to start another dye pot because it looks like we're gonna have two really sunny days in a row, which means really good filming lighting. But I just wanna show you what's going on on this day. First of all, Alex, say hi. Hello. I'm gonna show you what's going on in Toronto today because it is nuts. Look at this snowstorm. The world is gonna be at a standstill pretty much today and tomorrow. I'm so pumped because tomorrow is supposed to be really sunny. It's gonna reflect off all this fresh snow and give us some really good lighting. So I'm gonna apologize ahead of time if the lighting is a little freaky for the beginning part of the video, but I think tomorrow the video should be really crystal clear, but I want the dye to already be done so that tomorrow I can get to putting the wool in it. I wanna make all the dye today so tomorrow I can actually like scour the wool and then dye the wool. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Okay, so here is what we are looking at right now. Um, it's pretty dark, it's like a red, sort of like a black tea, if you made a red rose tea, it's that kind of a color. Um, I did dip a piece of white toilet paper into the dye and then I'm letting it dry. It looks a lot more yellow in, um, in the camera than it does, it's got a pinker vibe on here, but I'm still gonna let this soak. It's still just sitting at a very low heat and I'm gonna let that soak for as long as I can stand it. And I'm keeping the temperature really low. I'm not letting it get too uh, close to a simmer. I'm trying to keep it very low and slow to get as much color as we can. Okay, so I'm gonna get started with these Concord grapes. These have been sitting in my freezer for months and I'm excited to start getting the skins off of the uh, gooey inside and using the skins to make really beautiful blue dye. So I'm gonna start with something a little bit loud. There we go. Um, and next, I'm just going to add some warm water. Next, I'm going to put on some gloves. Uh, I'm doing this because this job is very much going to stain whatever it comes in contact with. Uh, the Concord grape skins are super pigmented and if you're squeezing out the gooey part from the skins over and over again, you're gonna end up with stains all over your hands. So for this, I'm gonna be working right into my dye pot um, and I'm going to make an ice cube apparently. That's not what I meant to do. Okay, so now that all the grapes are sitting in a little bit of water, I'm gonna pull the grapes out and the skin just squeezes right off. I'm gonna put the skin into the pot and then the gooey part, I'm just gonna put it back in to this uh, sink for now. And by doing this, by skinning the grapes in advance, it's going to make it so that um, the dye pot just has what I need. Like I'm not gonna have to strain out as much stuff and it's gonna be a more concentrated dye uh, in the end. And you can use these inner globules here to make green grape juice, which is awesome. And they stay frozen, so when you leave them back in the sink, no problem. I love using Concord grapes for natural dye just because they store really well in the freezer. Um, and my parents have a farm and these are available on the farm, so I, I am blessed to have access to them. Um, but you can get them at the grocery store when they're on sale and just store them and then use them for dyeing when, when inspiration strikes. And for me, that is today. I'm excited to start doing some cool dyeing, um, but I want to let the dye soak overnight, so I want to um, get started today so that tomorrow I will be ready to dye my yarn. Okay, so I'm pretty much done with getting the skins off of these grapes. That took way longer than I thought, like almost 40 minutes. Um, so that will have been time-lapsed for you. So lucky you getting to zoom through it. Um, but now what I'm gonna do is collect the remnants, the grapes that are left in the sink, and I'm going to put them back in the freezer. I'm not gonna do anything with them now, but I'm gonna find something to do with them later. With the grape skins, I'm going to cover them 
with filtered water uh, because I want to see if it makes a difference to use filtered water. Um, and I'm going to put them on the stove on a really low setting, same as the avocado pits for, I don't know, a couple of hours anyway. I'm in no rush because I don't have the wool done yet anyway. So if you're keeping track or if you're trying to copy this recipe, what I've got so far is about, I would say 10 cups, probably one freezer bag full of frozen Concord grapes, the skins from that much. You can see how that came out. This is probably maybe six cups of skins, I would say. So maybe this is more like 10 or 12 or 14 cups of grapes equals I would say six cups of skins. I'm going to cover that with filtered water and I'm gonna put it on the stove and I will show you in a little bit what that looks like um, after I get it all set up. I'm just getting the rest of those little gooey bits out of the mixture. Okay, so um, it's seven o'clock at night now and I'm kind of inspired to keep making more dye. I know it's nighttime. I know the lighting's bad. I know it's not going to be the best part of the video, but that's hopefully something you can forgive me for. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to also do a batch of onion skin dye. So this is the skins from about two, two pound bags of onions. Uh, I collected them over the course of, I don't know, the weeks that we've purchased onions. So I'm going to use all of them because go big or go home. And this is not enough water, but I'm just gonna cook it down first and I'll keep adding water as it evaporates. It's gonna make a really beautiful orange. So I'm going to let these sit um, for, from probably seven until nine. I'm keeping them on a low setting, um, medium for the grapes because it's a little bit a bigger of a container and then at nine o'clock I'll turn them off and I'll just let them sit overnight and then I'll probably turn them on in the morning but I'll bring you in for that once the sun comes up after I finish with my live stream in the morning so okay so we're back it's the next day now it's about 8 30 in the morning and I turned on the heat this morning at about 10 after 4 when I woke up um, everybody's been on low low heat I have the grapes on a little bit higher just because this burner doesn't get quite as hot so they're all on a low heat barely not even a simmer just kind of steaming um, and they've been doing that since like I said about 10 after 4 so just over four hours this morning and last night I did about three hours so total time they've been heated and sitting for about six seven hours and it's pretty exciting I'm pretty excited to see what we're going to yield from this extra long cook time plus they had a whole type a whole amount of time overnight sitting in the warm water while they cooled down and then I warmed them up again this morning. So I'm hoping that this is going to coax out some bright colors. Now it's time to strain the dye um, out or to strain out the solids out of the dye bath. So I'm going to get a glass container and something to strain it with. You could use some cheesecloth, um, a really fine mesh strainer or a sieve. Um, I'm probably going to be using an old t-shirt. So I'm gonna go look for something, I'm gonna change the angle, and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it. Also, my yarn has been sitting overnight as well in the water. Uh, I'm gonna rinse that out after I finish with the, the actual dye bath. Okay, so I turned the heat off, and I think that I've invented something that's gonna work really well for what I need to do. Um, I've got a glass container, which I think will be big enough to hold all of the liquid, at least most of it for the grapes. I'm wondering if we should start with a different color though. I kind of feel like we should start with the onion because it's the lightest color. It's gonna be yellow. So maybe we'll start with that. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do just for the first bit is I'm gonna just take a few scoops and start it that way. This embroidery hoop was a great MacGyver thing that I did. I, I used an embroidery hoop and put a dishcloth inside of it and now it's basically a strainer. I wish I had thought of that last time and just sort of pour it in I think. sit 
that there for one sec and I'm gonna pour this. Oh, that's hot, of course it is. I'm going to pour this into the plastic container so that I can refill this with the next uh, amount. Okay, so after passing the onion skins through a cloth, this is what the cloth looks like. Super brown. Uh, it looks orange in the camera. I'm hoping I'll be able to color correct it to look a little more accurate. Um, but yeah, very brown. When I'm using fabric like this as a strainer instead of an actual strainer, um, I always get it wet first. This embroidery hoop idea was actually really a good idea. Okay, now we're gonna turn around and I'm gonna do it again. This time I'm gonna do it with the... I guess the avocado. I guess it doesn't really matter what's next. I guess I'll go avocado next because it's gonna be lighter than the grapes. So let's do that. Okay, so I've got my strainer here. I'm gonna take my lid off. how bizarre the pits and skins look now. They're like a weird dark bark color. Ow, it's so hot too. And the skin, it's kind of this pretty reddish brown. Weird. Okay, so the strainer got stained, of course. Kind of a pinkish orange. Hopefully this color will be glorious. It's really pretty. It's very dark. This is opaque right now. Hopefully we'll be able to um, get like a pretty pink. That's what I'm hoping it'll look like. Okay, so last one. We're doing the grapes now. This one's going to take a little bit longer because um, the grapes are bigger. So I'm going to switch the order of the strainer and the mesh part uh, just because I'm thinking that if I can get this fabric part underneath, then I'll be able to swap out the bowl once in a while to get the big chunks out. That's what I'm thinking. I'll be able to take it out more easily. We'll see. Okay, so now I have dissolved um, some alum powder into some filtered water. It's been passed through a Brita filter, so I don't know if that'll make it work better. I hope it will. Um, but I added the right amount of alum powder for the weight of the yarn that I'm using, and I'm just making sure it's completely dissolved in my pots, and then I'm going to add my wool to the water and bring it up to a simmer and let it simmer for about an hour. And there we go. So now the yarn is going to sit there in these pots with the aluminum alum powder until it's alumified? I don't know, I'm gonna let it sit there for about an hour until it gets all plump and looks ready to accept the dye and then we will put it into the dye baths and let it sit there probably all the way until tomorrow. I'm gonna just go ham and make some super pigmented dye. So I'm super excited, but for the next hour and a half, this is where it's gonna be. Okay, so I am back. The yarn has been sitting on the stove. It is 12.43, so for a couple of hours now. I'm putting on some gloves so that I don't hurt myself. And then I'm gonna pour out the yarn. So it's still hot right now. It's not too, too, too hot, it's not boiling quite. But I'm gonna take it while it's still totally wet and I'm gonna place it into the, um, into the dye baths which I should probably stir one more time because they have been sitting. So they've cooled down now um, to room temperature. I, t I touched them a minute ago. They're cool to the touch. So we're gonna start. I'm putting one half in the avocado and one half in the onion skin. Ouch. 
So I'm not even rinsing the yarn, I'm just letting it drip for a second to get some of the excess water out. Okay, so for the next two, I'm gonna do onion and um, blue. And then the last set, I'll do avocado and grape. All right, so here is my dye right now. I've got little areas in between that are um, going to osmosis the dye through. You can see it's dripping. The purple is going to drag over and the orange is gonna drag over. Uh, the orange is looking super yellow in person right now, which is fine by me. And then the avocado pink has a bit of a brown vibe to it, which is fine. Again, happy with every color I'll get. And then the grape is going to give me <laughs> such a bright blue, I know that, because this has been slow roasting for so many hours. I'm very excited to see how this one turns out. So we will see. I'm going to let that sit probably till tomorrow. So I will see you tomorrow and we'll see what we've got. Okay, so it's the next day now. Um, it's 8.53 in the morning, so this has been sitting now for like 24 hours almost, like a really long time. Oh no, no it hasn't, sorry. I put this in at noon yesterday, didn't I? Okay, so it's still been sitting a really long time, but not quite a full 24 hours. Um, but I'm gonna rinse it out now, and I'm very excited to see what we're gonna get. I'm gonna start with the lighter colors, and I'm gonna do the the more bluey ones secondary because they're gonna stain the sink I think. So I'm gonna start with this yellow and peach colored one. Oh yes. I'm just gonna get it in the sink and I'm gonna rinse with cold water um, until the water runs clear and then I'm going to just sort of start layering them in the second sink. Make sure that's open. This one looks like it got stained a little bit by blue. Uh, I poured some blue onto the fibers in the evening uh, and it looks like this one, it sunk to the bottom. So we've still got that avocado pink, but on the other side, it's kind of a purpley blue. We'll see what that turns into. Look at these colors. So now I'm going to do, I guess, the yellow and the blue. So again, this is made from onion skins, this yellow. Looks like the bottom of this one got a little bit stained by the blue also. Fine by me, because I love how this blue looks. Wait till you see how bright and pretty it comes out. I think this is the first time I'm using a mordant with the, with the grape dye, so this may actually be brighter than I've seen before. Okay, I'm just gonna go hang these first ones up in the bathroom. Okay, I moved all of those um, rinsed out ones to the shower. So they are hanging in my bathroom now to do their final drip and then they'll stay there to dry over Oh, probably until the afternoon, and then I'll hang them on my yarn swift in the afternoon. Um, oh, Alex, did you see? Um, someone commented on one of my videos. They used my Amazon link to buy a yarn swift. Really? Yeah, Kim Baran. She bought That's one cool. of. Did it come up on your? No, not. I haven't looked at it yet. I, I just saw the message. She said that she. Um, she really said nice before. Story. She was the one who said she would use my link. I remember you did say that. When I was saying, I don't know if it's worth it. So. Um, That's cool. Isn't that cool? So yes. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it in the video. Um, thank you for using my link. Also, everybody, if you want to buy yarn things that I have or that you see in my videos, I'm gonna start linking them in my like Amazon affiliate links. I signed up again um, for the affiliate links, so I'm gonna see if now that we've hit 10,000, maybe it's worth having. So if you want yarn things, uh, check out my links. Yeah, apparently I get a percentage of it, but uh, we'll see if that ever happens. I'm gonna go hang these ones up. Alright, so now that my hands are like 
frozen and raw. I rinse them in cold water. Um, look at all this dye bath that's left. Obviously it's not going to be as strong of color um, as it was, but it's definitely not absent color. Like I can see that there's still pigment left in all of them. So what I've decided is I'm going to do one more round. I'm going to just do one hank because I think the dilution of the dye might mean that we've got issue with um, having not enough pigment. So I'm going to get started by first uh, washing my wool. I'm going to do a little bit of a quicker wash and then I'm going to do the same process that I did for the other wool. I'm going to bring it up to temperature in an alum bath and um, yeah, see what we get out of this second round of dye. So stick around to the end for the bonus hank. Okay, so here's my theory. I mixed a little bit of what's left of the grape juice in with what's left of the yellow, and then I mixed a little bit of the grape juice in with what's left of the pink from the avocado. If I do this um, hank of yarn half and half, maybe I'll get purple and green. Um, if not, it'll just be a happy accident, whatever color we get. Let's channel Bob Ross and just... <laughs> make pretty colors. So I'm not really worried about the color we'll get, but I'm kind of hopeful that this will be green and that will be um, purple. We'll see though. And I'll add blue as needed. So I am going to keep this um, grape juice here so that I can add it to the uh, dye baths if I find that the yarn isn't getting colored well. But the yarn is going to sit on the stove now for about an hour and a half to get up to temperature mixed with the alum. And then we'll do the whole dye thing all over again. That's pretty much it though for now. All right, so now we are here. It's day three of this dyeing adventure. Um, this is my second batch of um, dyed yarn. Excuse the messy sink. I'm going to just rinse out this last one. Um, and for this one, what I did was I mixed the blue and yellow from the Concord grapes and the onion peels into one bath and then I mixed a little bit of blue into the avocado to try and make a purple hopefully and then I used what's left of the blue to just dip a little corner so that we could have hopefully blue green and some kind of pinky brownie purpley color we'll see because it was the second dye bath so there wasn't as much uh, color to it here you can already see it's lighter to begin with we'll see what it becomes though All right, so at this point, the water is running, oops, the water is running clear, which is amazing. Uh, I am really, really happy with how this color turned out. Oops, I just dipped it back in, hold on. Okay, so we got a really beautiful green that I'm very excited about. I definitely think I'll be keeping this one. Uh, I don't know what I'll make with it, but we got really pretty green, really pretty blue, and kind of like a pinky brown. Um, the pinky brown transitions into the green and into the blue, so I like it a lot. I think I'll hang from that side though, so that we don't get that stained by the blue that's going to drip. So I'm going to hang this up in the shower for a couple of hours and then I'll dry it on my yarn swift like I did with the other ones. And then once this is dry, I will show you uh, what, we, what we came up with. Okay friends, so after all of that, all the dyeing, all the drying, all the everything, it's done. The dyed hanks are dry and I've re-hanked them in that sort of a twisted braid sort of look. And now I'm going to show you what they look like. So just for reference, this is what we started with. This is the Briggs and Little Regal Wool. It's a two ply, 100% wool, and I got bleached white. First, I wanna show you um, the two brightest colors. So that is gonna be the Concord Grape and the Onion Skin. Look at this color. Oh my God, I can't even believe Look at the color we got from onion skins and Concord grapes. That is a beautiful, 
bright, dark blue. It's really stunning. And there's different tones all throughout. There's some greenish blue. And if I just pull the hank apart so that I can show you, you can see at the areas where the blue transitioned into the yellow, there's a really beautiful sort of greenish sea foam color palette. And it's amazing. I really love this one. Um, again, on the other side, you can see how that transitioned. But look at how bright that gold turned out. Those onion skins with the alum powder really gave such, oh, I love how this color turned out. So I'm very happy with that one. Um, and of this color, I made two different hanks. Two, I dyed two hanks um, with the same colors. So they're fairly similar. This one has a little bit more of a, a white grayish tone to it. You could see it's still got color compared to the undyed yarn, but it's much paler in the transition areas than um, the other skein. So they're both a little different, but they're still in the same sort of color. Next, I'm going to show you the blue Concord grape dye mixed with the avocado. So here it is. It's so pretty. I actually ended up dripping a little bit of yellow onto the transition areas in the end, and it gave this sort of hidden unicorn peacock surprise in there, um, which is something we were saying on the live stream a couple of mornings ago uh, when I was talking about how I love the colors. The avocado did give some pink tones. I hope that they pick up here. Um, you can see it definitely picked up color uh, like over the bleached white, but it's much browner than I had hoped. I was hoping for a little bit more pink. There is some pink to it, but it's still browner than I would have hoped. Um, and I know it's brown <laughs> because when I compare it to that, um, that previous dye job where I used the black walnuts and the Concord grapes, you can see it's almost identical. Like it is pinker, it's warmer tone, but it's a very similar color. So I'm just bringing that one in for reference. Um, but yeah, I made two of this one also. So here is the second one of that. I've got two with the Concord grape and the avocado pits. Although I think I could have got more color if I had had more avocados. I only had two pits and about three avocados worth of skins. If I had saved up five or six pits again and done it this way, I think I could have got a brighter color. Um, but I still love how it looks. I really do think these turned out beautifully. And next I have the onion skins and the avocado and these are honestly two of my favorites. I think I might keep these. I've been considering if I should put some of these up on my Etsy shop, but I don't think I could do that with these ones. I love how the avocado picked up pinks in this one. It's really like a weird unicorn. It's like there's purple in the, in the mix and some green and yellow. It's like I would never have mixed these colors together, but now that I'm seeing them together, I can imagine like just such magical things with these colors. And I don't know exactly what, but like, oh, there's a whole series of like purpley blues in here and some seafoam greenish grays. It's it's weird. The yellow is so bright. And then where I dripped some uh, grape juice on in the evening, picked up a lot of green tones, very bizarre, but I really love it. I really think it's a a unique and beautiful color. So that one is the avocado skins and the onion dye. And then I did a little bit of grape juice on that one too. And last but not least, this one is actually the recycled dye round. So this one I made with the remaining dye. So after I had dyed all of the other hanks, I mixed the yellow and blue together to make a green. And then I mixed some more, not mixed, I, I put uh, some of the blue aside in a container, but you can see I got a really vibrant, a really beautiful green. Honestly, I, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. I think I'll keep this one too, just because I'm, I'm really happy with the greens. I love green and I've struggled finding out how to make green and I never considered just mixing <laughs> blue and yellow. I had been trying to make green from like, grass or, or like green plants or anyway, this works. So I'm very happy with this. I think the alum powder definitely helped because all of these things used um, alum powder as a mordant and they definitely got some really beautiful bright colors. If you look at it compared to that white, 
it is just something else. It's like a beautiful yarn rainbow. I'm so happy with it. Um, so I really hope that you liked this. I really hope you liked seeing me figure out how to dye yarn because I'm going to keep doing it. I've got eight more hanks of sport weight yarn and I've got this one left of my big regal weight so let me know in the comments down below let me know what I should do next should I dye with some spices should I do turmeric maybe or chili powder I've seen some really cool stuff online for some natural dyes that you can find in the cupboard or in the grocery store so let me know in the comments what you think I should do next for color and what you think I should do with these hanks uh do you think I should put them on my Etsy store let me know anywho Let's just have another couple of minutes where we look at this yarn and see the beautiful colors. Anyway, friends, that's all from me for today. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, leave a like. It definitely helps out the channel and it's a free way to do so. Um, and I really appreciate it. So again, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.